So before we continue, let's first clean our script up a little bit here. There's always going to be a lot of playing around like this in Grasshopper, so let's, let's not let stuff accumulate. And let's learn a new, new good habit. I'm going to teach you about the scribble component. And our algorithm was very clear that there were two steps. And we want that algorithm on paper to match the algorithm in Grasshopper. So we're going to say here, select mouth. And we're basically going to do something where we select all the components over here. And we hit down our middle mouse wheel, bring up this window. And we go to this guy, who's a group. And you can tell here he's, he's put everything together. So I can change the color and everything. But effectively, this is helping me keep it nice and clean. Because when you get more complex scripts, you're going to want to be able to reverse to look at your DNA of your script and your algorithm that you developed on paper and see the same logic in this part of the script. So now that our script is nice and clean, uh, we can move on to the next step. And let's just set that up this time. And we say that step, the step number two, rotate the mouth, yeah? So in this situation right here, um, we said there's the curve. Just look at the instructions real quick. There's the curve. And we know that the instructions have stipulated um, the output should be a preview, not baked, displayed in red mode. Yeah. So we're on our way because we know we have the mouth. And our algorithm stipulated that we wanted to rotate the mouth to get that smile. And we already just learned about the red mode business. Um, so the first thing we know is, is that if we're really cleaning this up, that we don't want to be showing um, the, the output should only show the face smiling, nothing else, no temporary or sacrificial steps shown. So we know that there's going to be a rotating of the mouth, and then the final thing is going to be, let's say, display smile. Mm -hmm. And we know that that's probably going to be just some sort of bucket, let's say. We learned about the bucket last time. And that bucket's going to be on preview. That means everything else should be not previewed. So in this case, before we had learned that if you right-click it and you go unpreview, you won't see anything in red mode here, yes? Uh, you could just as easily grab everything, middle mouse wheel, and do this. So we're one step away from being done here. Now, just like we did in the first session, how do we do this? We say, how on earth do I rotate a piece of, rotate a mouth? No, we don't say, how do you rotate the mouth? You'll never get the answers, we already learned that. So we could say, how to rotate geometry, right? And in this situation, we'll probably get some information that's useful for us. But again, if we just want to kind of wing it and be in grasshopper land, we know that there's a couple areas we could look. Number one is we could look up top, and we could try and look through and say, is there anything up here that talks about rotation? I think it would be in transformation because that is a transformation, and lo and behold, there's some things in here that say rotate. Equally, you could double click and you say rotate, and there's a bunch of things that come up, and you might just be very very excited because you're using grasshopper and yes I, I, I know how to use it and then you just grab one of these uh, randomly and it may not work so the key is is there's a lot of tools in grasshopper and there's always more coming out same with dynamo so you have to be careful and you have to again utilize your skills to pick the right thing so the best way to do that is to type in from first principles what you want to do and then sort of hover over each one of these and determine which one best suits your needs. Again, appreciating what it, it wants to, to do. This guy says, rotate plane. Per perform plane rotation about the plane z-axis. So is this what we want? Because this says rotate plane. The emoji itself even looks like it's a plane. Uh, do we have a plane? Are we trying to rotate a plane? No, we have a curve, right? There's rotate 3D. Rotate an object, an object around a center point 
and an axis vector. Sounds a bit closer, we have an object, but do we have a center point and an axis vector? Not quite, yeah? Oh, it's good valid one. So in this situation, you can go through all of these, and just for the speed, the purposes of uh, expediency, I would actually use this one, rotate an object in a plane, okay? So let's put that one out there. Now this is your first grasshopper component we've laid down, and we need to learn a little bit about how to sort of inspect these guys. So if you hover over the black portion of this component, the English will come up again to tell you what it does. This one, same as when we were in the menu from before, rotates an object in a plane. Um, and then if we hover over the inputs over here, the inputs on the left-hand side of the black part, there's a geometry, G, that we put in. There's an angle in radians that we put in. And there's a plane that we put in. And we had talked about this before, where these make sense. These inputs are exactly what we talked about in the previous video on paper. So there's no surprises here. So we're ready to get going. Normally what I like to do is I like to keep the bucket around. So I'll just copy it forward. And we know that this is the geometry. If I go to green mode, just for sake of uh, expediency here. This guy right here goes into G because he's our geometry. Now, as you can see, nothing, you might say, oh, this thing didn't work right away. Because if I click him, I don't see him that he's flipped. So, but then again, should we expect that he works? Do we give him all the inputs? First of all, it's 0 0.5 pi, so that's pi over 2. That should be a 90 degrees. And what plane? It's the XY plane. So those of you who are a little bit skeptical would say, well, why on earth do I not see... This is the XY plane. Why do I not see something maybe pi over 2 like this? Yeah? Well it all really comes down to the context of this problem. Where is this XY plane located? So if I click him and I want to know a little bit more about what's going on, I click the middle mouse wheel down and I go zoom, zoom pre to preview geometry of all selected objects. And lo and behold, right now, this is the grasshopper preview for this XY plane here. And that is where the XY plane is. And if I show my geometry of the problem again, that's where my geometry is. And if you look really closely here, you can see uh, right up here that this is where the mouth has ended up. But this should come as no surprise, because just looking at it from this perspective, we can tell that about the XY plane, that mouth has been rotated 90 degrees. So because we're sort of able to understand geometry and we're able to understand basics of how to investigate the data with Grasshopper, it's all making sense now. And these are why these are such important principles. Because now we can fix the problem. First of all, I need the XY plane to be relocated uh, from here to up here. How do I do that? You would double click, in this case I'll give you the answer. You would double click the XY plane and again, I plugged it in there, it hasn't changed a thing. But this is when it would be very important to start worrying about this, which is the origin of the XY plane, yes? So that origin is going to become very important because it's going to be where we pivot from. Uh, and then also, it's the angle. So do we really want the angle to be 0 0.5? Pi. No, we want it to be 180, so we just want it to be pi. So we right-click and we change it in here. So now the key thing becomes is, okay, I have the curve. I've actually manually hard-coded that it should be 180, so now the things come 180. But now how do I get this origin to be the correct thing, right? And that is really the next part of how our algorithm needs to develop a bit more on paper to really appreciate fully the, um, the problem. So our algorithm is still very much based solely on English, let's say, and human understanding. But in order for this thing to start becoming more and more automated, we need to find a way to get a new piece of information uh, for this problem. So let's go back to the board 
and work solely on fixing the algorithm to be a bit more robust before we move on.